back on the land. Uh, inexperienced team, sure, in a lot of ways, but but everyone, this is you can take advantage of that. There's a lot of people here in that same boat. They they seem to be finding that upward trajectory at just just the perfect moment, which is which is kind of like it's an interesting contrast to a phase team that that you know is going to be playing well, that you know is going to be playing good, but like that that's a team that's not necessarily on an upward trajectory. They're just I relying see, uh, on the return so to land as being that I'm, impetus. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna counter you there. I think phase is a top four team in this in this major. Well, you've lost. I think they'll be in the semifinals. lost your mind. Nope, they'll be in the semifinals. I'm calling it right now. I think phase is actually. You want to put a pie on it, Matt? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. Oh, I hate Chad. He put the thought in my brain on Twitter, and now See, the it's thing just is, like, if you there, were to it's like a worm. It goes your way too, man. Like oh. if I win that, you realize you get hit with another. Yeah, pie. I take it back. I don't want to do anything like. I don't want to. I don't want to feed them to pie world. Uh, good kills. Two opening kills for the yet side. Those USPs ringing out, and Olaf waiting outside of that B bomb site. Another headshot coming in for Sphinx, and Brokey has no idea where to go. Damned if you do. Damned if you don't. Yeah, that's quite an awkward door. One foot on the both side of wrong as Dachi will take down Brocky and now Twist follows him down. So Ents get the opening pistol rounds. I haven't really seen a lot of Dust 2 in the flesh uh, since the changes. Okay. Um, as someone that's been around Counter-Strike as long as you have, and Dust 2 kind of being the, the face of the franchise yeah. in terms of maps for so long, uh, what are your thoughts on some of these changes that kind of take away some of the legacy aspects of I, it? I feel like I was maybe one of the only remaining people in the world who really actually enjoyed the pickoff factor of the Dust 2 cross. And, and yeah, that's probably mostly nostalgia talking. Do you know what I think a lot of it is? And I'm going to be honest about it. I think it's modern internet being better. I know in LAN it's not an aspect from the pros. But also FP... Oh, that's... Dashi is on a yeah. great start well, right now. But also modern FPS and refresh rates being better to make that shot more actually... I just, people are better but i mean look as we're talking about it right now that's what it kind of allows you to do on the ct side now that that's gone there there is that the bigger risk of that kind of mid aggression of aggression um, from the ct side which is kind of cool and also i think the, the biggest factor of it is, is obviously the ct is required to burn burn a, burn a smoke to be able to cross relatively safely I meant top eight for phase, by the way, just as they oh, go down. So, okay, I said yeah, top four. I here said we top go. Four. Okay. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> no, I, I could say, I mean, look. I Ents call is shenanigans. Ents is another team that could, like you say, be a dark horse in this whole event. It's weird that we're, you know, we're in the challenger stage and we're already picking out teams that could go far. But again, I think there's an advantage potentially for some of these teams to start on challenger because it's a reset for everyone and you get more time to play into this event. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Good tag with the scout. Snappy doing some work. Molotov to keep FaZe at bay and also give him the freedom to peek up through the crack of the double doors. Ooh, this is a nice little nade. Yeah, that's going to be a huge hit. Twist down to 29 from that. Olaf down to everyone's favorite number. And Kerrigan will work outside of the double doors at long where none other than Tatcha is waiting again. And he now sits at 6 and 0. Oh. Pretty remarkable score. Sphinx is on five and zero. So 11 kills between uh, those two out of the, well, I was going to say 12 they had before those two final ones came in, but now it's three nothing for Ents. A quick three nothing. Like, no problems in that three nothing. Actually, they've only lost one player, and that was on the pistol round. So well done for Ents so far. Faze finally have the guns in hands. Brokey has that AWP, and I think that's been the real, like, the revelation. When you mentioned how, how good of a star player he's kind of formed and become within this Faze roster, his work with the AWP when he's in, like, high-pressure, chaotic situations is something special. It is very cool to watch. Rain going to lurk the tunnels this time. And... Conversely, to the point that you made about the CTs being able to push through, look at the utility they have just to clear this position now. The Ts have to actually put a little more effort into investigating lower mid. They can't just watch it from top and presume to take catwalk for free. So it does change the map quite a bit. Still love that little smoke in the doorway. That'll cover off the Xbox, cover off the catwalk position for pin anyone smoke. that's sitting back. Did you say it's broken? No, I said pin smoke. Ah. Do you remember in 1.6, if you were in CT, if you jumped and threw a flash into the arch, there was like a, a wall that didn't have a collision, and it would go in out of the map and flash everyone on catwalk in the corner? That seems unreasonable. Yeah, well, it was banned. Like, if you got <laughs> caught doing it on your VOD, you were suspended in CBO yeah, yeah. and, and Cal. Forfeit 12 But yeah, rounds. it was a ridiculously overpowered. You'd be in pubs, and everyone be like, I don't understand why I'm blind, and you're just <laughs> down there abusing it. Ooh, good cover from Brokey. Far back, holding the angle. Pop flash isn't able to do anything. Actually, I think he might have been a little bit blind. Now FaZe is going to start aggressively moving up. And, oh, they're trapped. He has nowhere to go. Neither did Hades. Olaf with a double kill. 
from Catwalk, and this will be FaZe's first round of the map. Sphinx trying desperately to use the MP9 to get effect toward the Catwalk position, but Olaf is still alive and well with the AK-47 behind the smoke. And the bomb down on A. This still takes Snappy at long. Good Lord, good push to try and take control of it. But the bomb down on A, and it leaves just one CT remaining. It is toward the mid position. We can see him on X-ray. The lighter blue are actually skulls with the numbers within them, and that's where they died. I was. It's easy to look beside the bomb and say, oh, there's a CT on it, Jason. No, it's a dead body. It's a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's dead. Spink's going to back away. Three to one. Nice round. That, that time, just the defense, that, that pop flash play out towards long was huge. Ooh, Spinks going for a drive-by right at the end. Almost was able to get it. But yeah, once once that long play goes down, once Brokey gets that kill, the two remaining players at the A bomb set are kind of stuck in no man's land. You can see them. They want to start pushing up. Catwalk, Olaf's here to put a stop to it. And from there, there's just nowhere the defense can go. Nicely done. So Set Smoke's already found with that little new window addition. To cover off middle, Kerrigan, meanwhile, investigating toward lower, will flash out and check as the rest of his team takes position inside. I shouldn't say the rest of his team, but two of his teammates at least. Will take position inside of tunnels. Deha actually faked some mid aggression, threw a Molotov and then threw a pop flash right at the end of it towards top mid. So that's something to look for uh, in the future. If you notice ends pushing up mid, that might be setting up for a later aggressive play. Kerrigan out mid. So is Rain, but he goes down the Molotov, trapping them in this aggressive stance, and it's not going to work out well. Kerrigan inside of that smoke will land on top of the flames and not fully cover off his position. So he's got something to work with. As twists will cover behind him with the wave of Molotov toward Catwalk as well. Brocky still holding out toward B Tunnels. Interesting position as well for Olaf Meister. You don't see this corner used a lot, but it's a good bait and switch to go off this AWP if they try and wide peek toward it as he preemptively fires Brocky into the flash. Smoke, Molotov, this will be a B split through mid. Very powerful in the pass. Reverse doors, Dodo's gonna actually work his way back through already and Diaz inside of the site, flash. Oh, he's caught by his teammate, mistimed it ever so slightly. Had a chance to line them up. Everyone was blind in turn on the T side, working through tunnels, and Twist will eventually find a way to take down his opposition, but they still have to find more, as even though they have the site, they have the wall to protect them. They've got the man, ooh, I was gonna say disadvantage, but Brocky pulls that back as Snappy falls. Ball needs to be planted. They just go aggressive instead. Good call from Twist. Dude, there's there's way too, that's that's a round lost by Entz. They had it perfect. You mentioned the mistiming on the peak with the pop flash, but even even like that, that's a that's a critical, I don't know if that was miscommunication. That was a perfect flashbang if he could have timed that right. Just chilled, waited a bit more patient, and you've got a bunch of pli blind players in a very narrow choke point. And then once Brokey gets set up with the AWP on top of the boxes, it's just such a deadly angle. That's, that's rough to lose for Entz. Three to two, but by the virtue of them having such a solid start, a solid 3-0 run, only losing one player, they have money to buy. I think Olaf might have gotten caught a little bit, thinking it might be a bit of a safe. Here's that push up mid, and Diaz got the opening kill. That's Olaf down. The four remaining players from FaZe Clan now readdressing into lower dark, but all they have is really a B hit. And Entz knows it. They know there's no one long. They know there's no one mid. They're rotating over, and Snappy's got a huge flank and T spawn. FaZe might be screwed and not even realize it yet. Here's the hit. Sphinx is going to grab that first kill. Follow-up spam isn't going to connect, but where are you going to go? And Sphinx has another one through the smoke. Does indeed. But watch for Snappy. What a flank. No mistake as he finds Twist. It's going to leave them stuck inside of the tunnels, and Brocky has no response for it either. It's fine. Four to two. And it just occurred to me, Jason, that yep. you also have a mullet. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just... Well, I don't know if we can get camera on us for just maybe a second here, but uh, yeah, the back of your hair has a little bit of scruff in the front spot. <laughs> so, yeah. I was wondering how you mullet work a mullet into a, into a bald joke. <laughs> 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 so that's unique. I don't know why. I had to pull so your long. crowbar out for that one. <laughs> Is that what you've nicknamed it? <laughs> well, four to two. Two round lead for Entz. That's a very, very good dominant round win for them with their backs against the economic wall, so to speak, off in the hands of Hades.
Kerrigan yet to get on the board actually was joint top fragger with twists in this morning's matchup. I think it was 22 for each of them. Brock, he led the way on the actual rating. He had 21, but had a little more contribution in each round as well. But yeah, so far, he and Rain. Rain's another one for me. I mean, when this team was actually finding quite a bit of success, he was the consistent cornerstone of it. He was the guy that yeah. you kind of looked at and on paper was the one that wasn't the star. Yeah. That just kind of fit in. But now he's kind of fallen off, I think, as of late in this roster. I think they've, they've, they've had a tough... I think this is one of the teams that's probably struggled the most uh, through the online era. The, the transition away from the events. I think they, they've had the, the most experienced players, it feels like, kind of suffered the most. So, um, yeah, been a, been a tough time. But he's experienced a bit of a resurgence, coming back into form a little bit here and there. It's just... With this team, it's consistency that's the main issue. Not not the peaks that they can hit. It's how often can they, can they actually fight at that level. Dodo, ready and waiting. Pop Flash comes in, doesn't peek with it. There's Kerrigan, a dink with that Galil, and Dodo's forced passive. This is an awkward fight, and now the utility is just going to rain in, and Dodo's somehow still alive, but just for the moment. And yeah, Kerrigan actually getting his first kill on the board with it as well. I think as a result, Twist actually gets Dia immediately after. Yeah, he overextended to help his teammate, who is certainly dead in the pit, and that leaves Hades in a real weird position with the AWP. Yeah, absolutely. He's yet to get a kill as well because his teammates have been doing such a tremendous job of finding them before the sniper rifle needs to. Sphinx snipe from afar with an AK-47 will find twists on the cross. Not only that, but he found Olaf lurking through the mid doors to leave this now at a two-on-two. -two. So Sphinx goes back up, spots the manic and off. Kerrigan goes down, and it's all on to Brokey. AWP as he works back down from the ramp. Scoped in already, not to make any more noise. Knows they're going to be lurking up toward him. Find Snappy sees their trajectory of the incendiary, but peeks it out. I don't think he actually intended to peek that far. Wanted to try and get the information, nope. but get nailed by it. Well, yeah, he's also knowing the Molotov has just popped to his right, and he's not sure how it's going to spread, so he's trying to play that game, walk a real fine line. A good clutch from Spinx. Nice 2v2, and Spinx is 12-2 and two at the moment. Four four kills in the previous round as well. Saves the op for Hades. We had a player drop. Ooh, didn't even notice that. Yeah, we did. It's already a little bit of a uh, tech pause for the moment. But I, th I think even in a loss, I think the nice thing for FaZe is that they've shown that they can take long, which is important. But also, they've seen a couple rounds where Ence's defense over at long and A has really mismanaged that battle at pit and at the corner to the point where it's actually causing them issues of their positioning in the site afterwards. So if I'm FaZe, I'm kind of feeling like you can still lean on these long hits, even though they haven't all worked. There's some success there. there there's some things you can play with there and force some mistakes out of the Ence side. So it is Dia that has dropped, and I just wanted to check. He's on eight kills because he was the other one that had a very strong start along with Sphinx. I, I know it sounds weird. Hades, Hades doesn't have a kill yet, but it's the rifles that have just been playing so aggressively from the CTs yep. that have been dominating this, this game. But I'm sure we'll take a minute to let him get back inside of the server. So the battle of Rain versus Hades. Who will find a kill first? <laughs> Uh, I take Hades. Yeah, I, I, I think you kind of do in this situation with the score as it is, don't you? Well, not this. I wasn't even looking at. I was looking at money. Fair. Low buy for phase next understand. round. Understand. Yeah. We'll see. You should be loading in bet now. Uh, we're being told so. It was just Shortly. a game crash. Nothing too. I guess significant. Okay. So inconvenient, but not significant. Yeah. This is uh this is gonna be cool to watch how this this kind of this map progresses at the moment. Very very curious. Three round lead, things looking good. Do you wanna you wanna go on a little bit about your uh, your your phase clan semifinalists conversation that you wanted to have? You wanna dig yourself a little bit of a bigger hole, perhaps? Um. I mean. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because here's what's gonna happen, right? All right here we go. Kerrigan is. Just a, an astounding in-game leader who has so yep. many plays up his sleeve, but he's yet to use his best one, which is Twist is just going to kill absolutely everyone. Oh, Twist go kill uh, strap. Yeah, twist, twist go kill. And Canada will finally get a player that wins a major. Can we actually talk since we have this moment right now? I, wanna, I, wanna, I know I introduced that subject to you. I'd like to shift really quick.
Sure. Twist. I don't actually have a resounding counter argument anyway. I just <laughs> believe it. I feel it in my loins. Twist's hair at the moment. Is that silver? Is that white? What are we working with? Is it bleach? You know, the weird thing is he's not like, this is not a bizarre thing. I don't know what it is about the certain Canadians. Normally, it's the French Canadians that do this with their hair, but like Jacques Villeneuve in like 1997 when he won the Formula One World Championship yeah, sure, had like a different color hair every time he went to the racetrack. Um, now he doesn't have any left. Um, but Twist, yeah, I don't know. I think it's... Platinum? Maybe he's trying to audition for Siri in The Witcher Season 2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's feels like the most is. likely of It options. almost has like a bit of a sheen that suggests there's like a purple undertone to it. Okay. But that could be the lighting. I, I need to know. see it in like real life. Yeah, well, we will soon. Yeah, we will. When he's in the semifinals and we're there. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so sad if they actually do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm never going to let you live that down. <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah. I, look, the weird thing is I don't actually think it's that unreasonable. I could be way wrong, and they could be Phil, and everyone will go, ha, ha, told you so. But I don't actually see it as that unreasonable because they get a chance to play into this. You mentioned it. They've got a lot of experience on land. I, you say they haven't had that huge upward trajectory, but let's be honest. Considering where they were at the start of July and how few maps they played and how poor their actual results were, they've definitely taken an upturn to some extent. So if there's a time for them to show up, it's now. Well, I think there were, yeah. I don't want to bag on them too hard, so we, yeah, it, we all know the potential is there for them to get to the semifinal. It's just we haven't seen anything that would indicate that it's that's likely or or in any way reasonable to you know. That's exactly why I like my odds. <laughs> 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 Those are the only predictions I make, the unreasonable <laughs> ones. Who was it at the E League minor that literally picked Vega for all? Of, was it you? Yeah. It was you. <laughs> I picked Vega, it was Vega off for to some beat Faze. Yeah. I oh. felt so bad, they because they were setting up, they were setting up like right next to the casting booth phase, and Kerrigan just like looked over and he was like, "You really picked him to win?" I was like, "Yeah, you guys are about to get stomped." <laughs> <laughs> and then they got beat sixteen to two, and I was like, "Ah, I feel a little bit like a like a like a I'm jerk." I'm from the future. Yeah, but also it was a lot of fun uh, on on Twitter, shark gifts. That's true. There was a lot of them. Yeah, simpler times. Well, we should. I said he was going to be on the way back any second. It was just a game crash. There might be a re-authentication Steam sort of situation. Um, I know that for the majors, it's clients. We, we play it through the, the Valve client as opposed to some of the third-party softwares that are used for typical league matches and whatnot, and, and oftentimes there's a whitelisting process, and Valve has to be involved in that. So sometimes yeah. it takes a second or two to get back in. It's a whole thing. It's a whole process. It is. It is a process. Maybe it's like a computer crash turned into a bathroom break. I don't see Ooh. any of those models moving. Ooh, you nobody's, make the points. Nobody's quick switching back and forth. Nobody's. Uh, and there's an admin in the room, and they wouldn't, shouldn't be allowed to talk right now. So, <laughs> all right, now we Sphinx is heard. Oh, now they're moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, guys, make the mouse. Five to two. I, I, I actually, yeah, I didn't really have anything to go with after that. Um, <laughs> what else have we got? What do you got on the B stream? Yeah, that is a good point. But there's obviously another game. We're into the one and zero, so we're not Copenhagen quite as awkward. Copenhagen Flames. Dude, these guys are sick. What is going on? Eight one over big. They stomped the Strollers this morning. I looked at them on paper and thought, yeah, that like if I was doing pickems, it might have been one of my own three teams. I have I have something weird going on with big right now where I just I I can't I can't get away from like picking them to win a match. I, I look at it and I'm like, I don't actually think big is going to win it, but they're I, they're usually good for like an upset or two. So I'm like trying to hit that that sweet spot of when the upset's coming, and it never does. Man, oh man, that's crazy. What a great first day for them. Talk about showing up ready to play at the major. Yeah, well, I mean, especially they had such a good run at the RMR at IEM Fall. They came out swinging in that event, surprisingly, yeah. and then they've just, they've just kept up the momentum. Really cool to see. That's and on, on the land as well for another team. That, yep. Okay, like Roge, some of these names we've seen before, but, like, not something I would have expected at I've all. never heard it called Roge. What do you say? What is his name, Roj? What Roy? Do you say? Roy? Yeah, I guess it probably is Roy, isn't it? Look, it's been a while. I think it is. I think I asked him at one point. It is, it I is think Roy. you're right. I think that is what we said at uh, Budapest. I think the last time I – well, Budapest, and I think I also saw him at oh, – I want to say he played one of the ice challenges. Flashpoint. Good old uh, Flashpoint go one. Point, so, <laughs> there you go. Well, Thanks we're for back. reminding me. We're back, Matthew. Five to two. Round number eight coming in hot. Diaz back in the server. Let's go, baby. Ooh, boost up. Drop down, boost up. Not quick enough. I'll try it again later. It's all right. You got some rounds to play with. Yeah, I do like there's still like a way to do it and, and like to get that pick still. But yeah, you got to commit a little bit more to it now at least. And uh, neither team really benefiting from either pushing from the CT perspective or trying to catch off a pick this time. Kerrigan will slide up catwalk already pre-scoped in. Headshot showing 
as Dia back in the server tries to get the kill toward Rain. He gets tagged, I think, before the nade, so the nade actually didn't do much. Either way, he's on 77 HP. He knew to back and away as well. Catwalk. Oh! Hades. So close, and then breaks his legs as he falls down. Yeah, he really did. Dia off angle, taken down by Olaf. Ooh, this is actually pretty weird. There's only one defender at the B bomb site. Now it's Sphinx, and he doesn't want to play inside. It feels like he wants to actually move out and address this with a teammate because if he stays in there, he's going to get split. He's got to find this kill. That's Olaf down, but he's still on his own. He's still got it all to do. They spotted him. Good kill. Better follow up, and that's the danger pretty much swept aside. Pretty significant movement, though, from Sphinx, yeah. as you called it. He thought he needed to get outside of the situation, but then rotates back over, makes good use of his movement. Nearly got caught out falling off the box, but either way, Dodo goes down to Rain. It's not done yet. Rain on the board. Two kills in this round. He's only two so far in the game, and he needs to double that if he wants to win this particular situation. 31 seconds. Bombs down to the mouth of the tunnels, and pushed through already is Sphinx. 18 HP. I don't think they anticipate Rain to be this far forward. But they will figure that out shortly because Hades, with the smoke dissipating in toward middle, will get that read. Rain's going to get a bomb for free, but oh, not spotted as he jumped back across to the plant as well. This is winnable. It's very, very winnable. Unfortunately, Sphinx couldn't cover the bomb. Here we go. Flashbang. It's a quick retake. They're already in. Trying to bait the low HP player. Rain's got it all to do, and he finds the last one. Third round for FaZe, and Rain delivers. Zero kills heading into this round. Four kills in it. Remember that time you said that Hades yeah, would get a kill before rain? I do. It's kind of like how I said FaZe would make the semifinals. Yeah, we'll I'm just preempting that as well. <laughs> but either way, uh, pretty remarkable that Rain's able to pull that off. Uh, Sphinx, I thought, had it all done. And he pushes through the tunnels, commits to pushing that far with Hades already watching mid. They get together, but they give up the bomb. He had to. Low HP, you don't want to just be covering the bomb away from your teammates, so they circle around. And the whole point you can see is to bait Sphinx's low health as he jumps in first. And Rain just wasn't looking there at the moment. But there's that precision. We know Rain 4. Perfect initial headshot and the cleanup afterwards. He'll be tasked with clearing out the bottom tunnels this time. Flash and Molotov already down, so it does take a little bit more utility from the T's. And he'll now advance toward the door where, where Dia's waiting in behind with the Deagle in hand. What a turnaround. Snappy looking for something in mid. Ooh. That flash timing could have been really bad, but Rain was actually caught by it as well. Snappy would have been an open target for an M4 in that position, but they'll work toward Catwalk now as they bypass that threat in middle, and Sphinx is waiting once again. Off to drop! Doesn't even land it! X-Ray was turned off at the right time because it looked like he was on the shoulder, but he was just above it, and what a headshot in return. Yeah, that's a huge weapon. That just That's twice now the AWP in that position Man, hasn't look, yielded look anything. showed up! Yeah, he's really cranked it up in these past two rounds. That's huge. Nice kill towards Pit. He's starting to look good, and that's the last thing you want if you're Ents after the good start you had. And Snappy quickly just trying to save the scout. All five players alive for FaZe. Yeah, I started at zero. He's now on six, tied for the lead with Twists. Kerrigan getting one in this round as well, and it's going to go five to four since Diaz rejoined. Shout out to Natsu. I'm sure he'll be watching back in Finland. Just because I like the guy. Yeah. He's all right. Just all right? <laughs> oh, you're not invited to the hot tub party next time. <laughs> I know. I've been trying to get to his his spa and hot tub and all that for years. I've just taken it away from myself. 5-4. It's fine. I'll send you pictures. Yeah. Wood fire sauna. Well, it's time to save if you're Ents. Everyone's sitting around 2,000. Not looking good. Oh, that's a, not the best sound when you're up against USPs. I was going to say, they got to try something different to get aggressive, and Kerrigan gets caught. Back down to 43 and removed by Dia and Dodo. 
as they'll now pick up an AK-47 for their efforts, and that will be held by Dia for now as they rotate around with it, but this is still going to be a bomb planted in B, and with that many players inside of the site, it's tough to retake. Probably just look for exits at this point, surround the perimeter, and try and get a few more guns. Uh, you could throw those USBs away if you, if you really want, and yeah, they are going to, but also, I mean, the AK-47 is already far away. It's kind of like, if those what, USBs what? happen to get a kill or two, I'll come back. When it rains, it pours. You know, yeah. I know it's a cliche, but I don't like, think man, anyone's used that line before. Never, actually. Yeah. I, I actually, uh, I got the NFT on it. It's now mine. <laughs> forever. Okay. Yeah. Never mind copyrights and metadata that had already existed forever, but now I own the NFT, which makes it definitely not official. Um, but it, no, no joke. Three rounds in a row, we said multi kills. Um, and as I know, this one's against pistol. Sure, it's not much, but it's just that momentum it's, aspect. It all right? counts, Matt. Yep. It all counts. I usually count my uh, anti ego kills too, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have any. So. Yeah, usually you count them double. <laughs> Guys, I have 12 kills, man. It says six. No, 12. 12, bro. 5-5. Five, five. We're all tied up. And, and not only has FaZe just come, come right back into this with a good little win streak here, they've done it pretty clean as well. It hasn't really been costly. hasn't gotten too close. they got to be feeling good. Money's building up. Rain's got 8,900. And timeout taken from Entz. They want to try and ice out this FaZe clan run. Tied early on. See what the response will be with guns on both sides. Does potentially, I mean, there's still a lot of corridors in which it can be used, but does potentially a double op setup become less viable um, on this map now that you don't have the mid pick? What, for the for the CT side? No. Sure. You can still play the side, so there's still enough position for it. T side, you're definitely probably not going to see it as much. No, not at all on the T side. But certainly no on the CT side. doesn't diminish the double ops at all for, for the defenders. Long take from FaZe. They've got control of it. They took a lot of damage for it. Rain and Brokey brought down by nades. But, I mean, who cares about that when you've got the opening kill? Kerrigan has worked his way all the way up. Catwalk, and he's come back checking for the flank. Sees even one more, and Kerrigan delivering in spades. Ooh. Triple kill to open the round, and that pretty much seals it. And Dodo taking advantage of the lack of tracers through the smoke and a gap that did exist. He could spot them jumping over, but this is one of the worst positions to be in right now. All your teammates are dead. You know they've crossed. They've planted above you, and you're stuck inside CT. It is an awful feeling to be down there in that yeah. dark, damp, cold place, knowing that the round is over. <laughs> and FaZe have the lead six to five. Okay, Kerrigan, that's a, that's a round and a half. And yeah, immediate timeout right out of it. There's some issues on this end side. Back-to-back -back timeouts after getting trounced by Kerrigan. Yeah. Again, he was slow to get started, but now finds himself on seven kills. That's a semi-final Kerrigan that we just saw. I there. couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I'm not normally the one that makes the ridiculous prediction. It's normally Anders, to be fair. It's always Anders. <laughs> yeah, it is always <sighs> Anders. It's exhausting. Has he made one this event? No. Okay, good. Then I, I'll take it for him. I got this. <laughs> I don't think he has. He hasn't told me yet. Usually can't wait. So back to pistols and a, and a scout uh, for the end side of things. Kerrigan's going to go first and head presumably toward straight into B. Yeah, I was going to say look toward lower, but now they're going to go all the way as Dio waits outside of middle right now with the scouts. B's open. They're going to find it out. Kerrigan, look at that. What a man of honor. He will lead the team by leading the team. Leading from the front. You love to see that. And he's read the economy. You know they're not like up against much, which is Alex why he's happy to clean peek that through mid. Uh, it's, yeah, it's nothing. I had filler. That's all I have. Six to five, about to be seven to five. And this is where you start getting into like the territory where Kerrigan can start feeling feeling more comfortable. Remember, his strength is that in-game leader, as we always talk about, his ability to read the game, his ability to adapt and, and you know change his game plan. And at the moment, he's got FaZe uh, in a very good position. About to take a two-round lead. And what? Four straight, I believe. Rain will sit up above and make sure no one works up from the spiral staircase at Tunnels. Twist, meanwhile, finds Spinks. Who 
at the time of uh, the technical timeout, was sitting already on 12 kills. And since then, he's only found three. And as you say, we've seen four straight rounds. This will be the fifth. So he's gone a little bit cold. Rain is the complete opposite of that as he finds Hades. Yeah, it's like, take your pick. Did they go cold or did FaZe kind of just catch fire and, and get hot? Because, I mean, Rain certainly did from as an individual just coming out of the out of the Diha drop. He, he came into the next round with a quad kill. Yeah, and rounds. I don't want to harp on too much about that technical drop because that just gives people a, a, an, excuse? Guess, an excuse. Yeah. Not even ants, but people on social media, etc. They'll they'll pry at it. You have to be able to overcome those situations at this level, yeah. no matter what. Like it's not an excuse, no matter no matter what team you are at this event. I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone's really making an, ex an excuse out of it these days anymore. But but certainly it is inconvenient to have a curve, but it does from time to time happen. Long take again. This time Rain is going to get in towards Pit. This time they don't take nearly as much damage. Last time they ran this Ooh. strategy, it was a fast play up catwalk from Kerrigan, but this time not so much. Rain took a shot from that scout. If that was an AWP that got elevator boosted, they have the man advantage already in this round, but it was not. Hades is the one with the op instead. It's still significant because now the M4s can euthanize Rain with a single shot. Kerrigan has snuck up the inside wall, though, and he's got Rain with. Molotov and smoke down on top of it. Dodo this time makes no mistake firing into the smoke. Traces them perfectly and Rain is gone. But he was the low HP player, so Kerrigan takes advantage of jumping across just after. Snappy's fallen away and he'll sit behind the box in the corner, waiting for his time to pop out as Dodo Do looks for aggression, excuse me. Dodo, but it's Dia that's behind him. I thought maybe a double elevator boost. This round is going to come down a lot to how Olaf plays this Luke, he, this Lurk. Ooh. He's in a lower dark at the moment, just waiting. He does need his team to put down the bomb or get a kill, take some attention away if he, if it's a, to let him make his play. That's not what you want. Now it's going to force his hand to move a little bit earlier. Brokey's going to go down, and it all slips away. Olaf, one more kill. Two on three. Hades isn't looking. Where's the communication? Not turning. He wanted the kill into the site. But the, got the kill in the site, that's the bomb. So he still gives his teammates a very good fighting chance. It's Double D, Dia, and Dodo. And I thought they were gonna go for that elevator boost with Twist behind Car. Instead, they found Twist cleanly. It's such a fragile position to play, and Olaf has a massive amount of work to do. Desperately fires at the same windows, but time is not on his side. 10 seconds, that all might have made the right call. As Olaf goes aggressive, they hear him. He spots the head, but he's gotta hold the plant. Can't do it, he needs to get kills. Finds one, but he's not gonna get the other. Smartly, they get away, and Dodo wins it on time. Ooh. FaZe almost turned that round. Kerrigan and Olaf almost bring that back, and that is a scary prospect. Good on Ents to hold on, but it was so costly. I think that was, what, like a 4-on-2 or a 5-on-2 at one point? That's the round you kind of want if you're Ents so you can actually stabilize some of your money, build up a little bit of bank. Instead, Kerrigan and Olaf take so much cash away. Four kills in a 2-on-5. Brutal. Brutal and victory. 6-7. to seven. Oki finds Stia getting aggressive through mid this time. First time they've done that with guns. They have got aggressive through the doors, but they haven't pushed top middle yet. So that's the first time they've they've shown that hand with weapons. Yeah, I mentioned Dia throwing that Molotov and flashbang to set up that mid push, and obviously didn't set it up nearly as well as he would have liked. Dodo trying to keep himself from going extinct. We know how that worked in the real world, but so far behind the smoke, it's actually done a lot better here as he finds Twist. Hits up above on the pit plat. Not a commonly played position, but kind of clever with his own smoke down, trying to see yep. above it, but Olaf very wisely fires through it and still gets the kill. That's a cool way to kind of give yourself enough safety to get aggressive inside of the pit when you're in that sort of a scenario. If you're a long player on Dust 2, definitely steal that a little bit. Obviously, peering over the top afterwards as well. One player in the car position, that's Hades, and Spinks gonna move up, but look at this flank from Kerrigan. Oh, oh, just missed the timing. Now the op can come into favor. Hades and Spinks both find a kill. A three on three to a three on one in a split second. Brokey with everything to do for FaZe. Ah, timing as well. Can't even get the gifted kill. I think Kerrigan was expecting a little more aggression out of him as he tried to just hail Mary it out from Catwalk. Didn't try and play the shoulder peaks. Went all in, scoping in as he heard. Nope, Spinks hasn't caught wind of that just yet. In fact, oh, timing's way off. This is weird. It's a okay. phase direction. P250 in hand. Brokey down. And finding the equalizer on seven. But that, yeah, that could have been a little awkward for a second. Could have gotten weird. It didn't. All tied up into the last round of the first half. Yeah, this is cool. Initial kill, use that smoke. They don't really expect you to swing and be aggressive, and you find another one. It's a nice way to go two for one as a solo long defender with no real help. Ents seem to have at least recovered a little bit. 
averting disaster. Oh, I cannot believe that was not a kill. Through the door. I think D hit down to five. Must have just been through the edge of the double door. Snappy in lower dark. The Rain's got to be careful. And now he's going to get aggressive and immediate headshot. 11 kills for Rain. Good hold of lower tunnels. We've seen him task with that position a few times. Finally, someone comes knocking. So who takes the coveted one round lead into the second half? I'm not sure it's that coveted to be fair on a map like Dust 2, but... Every lead is coveted. Yes. There's your pin smoke again, Jason. I like it. I'm assuming it's because it's like a cotter pin dropped into the hinge. Nice. Yeah. I like that you know the name, though. Cotter pin? Yeah. It's my brother's dog named Cotter after a cotter pin because they're... Of course it would be a dog. It had to be, well, it had to be <laughs> uh, a mountain bike reference for my brother's dog. Okay. So Dogs and mountain bikes. There we go. Yeah. Well, low HP op positioned in the back of platform. Dia, ooh, doesn't, doesn't get the shot baited out. Holds his nerve for the moment. And with 5 HP as they close this gap, there's not a whole lot of mistakes you can make. And there goes his backup. There goes Spinks. Will he find a second? Tries to flick over. Twist puts him down. Ooh. Into a 2 on 2 we go. That was confusing for me as well when we snapped over. I thought it was actually going to be a cross in position holding, but Hades spots the dead body instead. Twist, very clinical and clerical as he jumps up on top of the boxes, knowing his angles well. Gets above that smoke to catch off the AWP in the back of the site. But here's Dodo on a flank. Needs to time this well. Hades is not yet ready to challenge the B site. One flashbang for Twist, though. Oh, shot out Twist. Knows now that he's there. You're right. Still can work that. Kerrigan's got the shot out of Hades, and now they have the information. Molotov to buy some extra space. Twist hasn't brought the utility out. Okay, now he has. You can see it in his hand. Oh, not yet. He's going to walk into it. They'll hear the tag shortly, but Kerrigan just holds his nerve instead. The man is definitely AWP'd on the T and CT side of Dust2 in the past, but FaZe will take the one-round lead. Nicely done. Especially because Entz came out swinging. Like, oh, yeah. it, it wasn't like anything crazy dominant. It wasn't like the 9-1 the to one scoreline or whatever we found in the previous match. 9-2, sorry. Uh, but they still, I mean, they, they looked good in that 5-2 to two start. Everything was looking great. And then Rain came to play. That quad kill really set the tone, really set a fire under phase. And a good comeback in that first half. As you said, one round lead into the second half pistol. Ooh. Brokey's not happy about that one, but... He'll be okay. Yeah. I think tomorrow as well when we get out of the practice rooms and uh, into the tournament area, we'll get a little more player emotion on screen because we'll have the studio camera set up on the players as well. So it'll be great to see some of the emotion and reaction inside the server. And then maybe you can get an answer on, well, I know it's not in the flesh as you requested, but on Twist's hair color. Yeah, just curious. You looking to get it done yourself? <laughs> just paint my scalp. <laughs> <laughs> Olaf tapping away. Molotov going to force him into the open. Ooh, it doesn't actually spread towards the end. He does just get multiple gushes with that Glock. Now, there is a crossfire. Kerrigan's at car. Oh. Spinks didn't check it all the way, but look at the defense. They're all fighting together. Rain, the flank is timed perfectly. Dia just turns away. One on two, not even a chance to react. That was awkward, but beautiful at the same time. The crossfires, you lose the player at the back of the site. You said it, the Molotov didn't spread. There's the shot from Spinks. Kerrigan gets a brilliant first shot, which is enough for them all to turn and lets Twist come back into it. Then you get the great timed flank, which gets really awkward at the end, but that still left Twist alive. I mean, they traded off each other very well, but yeah. man, that could have gone a lot worse. I mean, you had three players inside that B-bomb site, essentially, for phase when that hit comes in. So if you're Twist and you're Brokey kind of rotating over, like, or Twist is the third player, but you, you, have, you have no fear of actually getting into that bomb site because you already have teammates with the crossfire set up. So Snappy with the Tech-9 works up Catwalk with the smoke down on top of the Xbox. You know the box that's right underneath the camera right now? Yes. What do you call that? Oh, that's actually a really good question. I think we should Bruce call box? it PlayStation because you have Xbox and PlayStation there then. Oh, okay. That's not bad. That might be your first good idea ever. Really? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Rain, good for one. Dia gets the shot in return on the Deagle, and that'll 
neutralize us again on fours. What about Nintendo? Nah. nah? That, they've always like existed, but they've been on their own, right? It's always been PS versus Xbox. Yeah, they have been on a level of their own. Yeah. It's way far above the other two. I man, Switch is I'm enjoying it since Pokemon Unite came out. <laughs> I find it so funny that you've just magically gotten so hardcore into Pokemon. It makes no sense, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Brokey inside the bomb site gonna play Whack-A-Mole. Popping up to grab one and two more. Still working his magic. Dinks are out. He even wants to fight with a sidearm. He's going to get it. Well held on the site. I do like the mustache on him, you know, looking a little more mature. You know what he looks like almost in that picture? Uh, Man, no? honestly, the guy who would have been a great duo for you, Blue. <laughs> he does look a little bit like Blue. There you go. <laughs> 10 to 7 in the favor of FaZe. Deagles are out for the end side of things. Hades has been nowhere this game. I know it yeah. was a slow start. His teammates were getting a lot of kills quickly. Mm -hmm. Good shot from Dia. Kerrigan caught off. Uh, he was getting a lot of kills. Like, he didn't have to do a lot when they were winning those rounds. But as the off player on Dust2, you've got to get in there eventually. Yeah, I will I will say, I, I kind of mentioned it in the first half, the way that Entz was attacking, or the way Entz was defending long, they, they put themselves in some very awkward situations and kind of mismanaging the pressure that FaZe was applying. I think Hades kind of got left out in the cold in a few of those rounds because of those mistakes. And, man, that, it's, it's a hard spot. If there was also, you got to keep in mind, though, a few missed shots. He played the drop yeah, angle on he Dust. Did, yeah. on, on, he had his on chances. Cat. Yeah. So it's it's a bit of both, I do agree, but he's he's got to find a way into this game. Because if you look at the, the rest of the kill totals, Spinks is killing it right now. 19, 16 yeah. for Dia. The rest of the team, okay, 8 and 6 isn't amazing either, No, you know, to be fair. But he's got to help. He's got to get it involved oh, and have dear. an impact. Dodo and Spinks, these deagles are having a huge impact. This all started with Kerrigan aggressively pushing middle with an MP9. That may not seem like a big deal, but now it is. Now the round's gone. Oof, that timing is brutal. The shots are brutal as well. All right, Entz, get back on the board. Eight to 10, first round to Entz in the second half. Yeah, it's also, you know, the Hades thing too is why like we always kind of, uh, I know like analyst desks and, and we talk about on talk shows and a lot of the conversation coming into this major, obviously out of the online era, obviously outside of all these new teams and players kind of rising up, the conversation has circled so much around the experience of some of these players especially in a matchup like this where you have some of the most experienced players on one side uh, and that ability to kind of dig yourself out of this hole it's probably more of a mental issue than anything else but to recover from it in a match like this is that that's where the experience comes into play and Hades obviously struggling a little bit to recover from a from a poor start you're right these deagles doing doing God's work here in this round for Entz three one digs across the map to net them their first round on the offensive side Up drop, don't go for the boost. Snappy still tries to, actually did connect, tries to catch one crossing. It's Twist that gets legged or tagged through the door and he goes down to 29 HP. Kerrigan takes down Dia. That at least holds long for now as rain has to fall off of it. And if you can anchor long position, you know exactly what happens. We've seen this so much. This is a cemented meta. Even further utility to help Kerrigan do so. Now what I thought was you were gonna get rained back all the way around get back down a platform you can start to fortify it either rotation through middle or on the catwalk but apparently they've got other ideas he doesn't want your gun kerrigan <laughs> keep it yeah low hp there's a late smoke rain is he gonna hustle back he does have a flashbang kerrigan needs that one kill flashbang incoming blinds kerrigan he didn't turn but thankfully it blinded sphinx as well still loses the fight but one for one, not the worst thing in the world, and they've got information now. So you can see some of the rotations, leaving Twist alone at the back of platform at the B bomb site. One in mid, and now two creeping over towards that A bomb site. 45 seconds still left in the round. Smoke goes toward long. That'll cover the closer of the two angles. The second one down, you do need two, as opposed to the early iterations of Dust, where you could bounce it off the wall with a single smoke. Good shot from Hades, though. That's going to find rain. Olaf 
Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. I was going to say, look at this labyrinth of smoke he's walking through, and it just barely on time and catches him out because he was still looking to make sure there was no gap toward long. Rocky jumping up, looking for the no scope. Oh, my God. I thought he had it on the second one, but Sphinx became well aware of the situation, <laughs> and it's just twist. The man who was tagged early will now sit in this dark dungeon. He oh, might it's... have had it on the second jump as well. I don't think he got the shot off. <laughs> I think his head got ripped off before he had a chance to pull the trigger. I don't know why that shot's just so exciting. Like... It is. For, it's because it's... <laughs> it just is. Like, it shouldn't happen. And when it does, like, I know that was... Okay, it might have put us to a two-on-two. Two. Maybe the round comes comes away with it. But even still, it's like one of those sick kills you love to see. It's because, like, fundamentally as a Counter-Strike player, you don't think that shot should be possible. Oh, still, for whatever reason. Even, like, six, six years later. Seven years later. Ten to nine. One-round lead for FaZe. They've got a save. Not a whole lot of money in the bank. Two thousand spread across, uh, you know, on each on each of four players. Olaf getting caught there trying to work the smokes, and there's Sphinx with some fine bodyguarding work. Well, we'll see what the result of. Ooh, here's a stack. Uh, well, I was gonna say, just the pistols is going to be, and interestingly, it's the stack because. This is like an old school boost. You can go up catwalk. It's still faster, but you can also just run through mid doors at this point too, yeah. which might be 50-50 depending on spawn. Well, Dodo got out long so fast, he definitely heard the footsteps of multiple players on catwalk. So you saw an immediately f uh, immediate flash from ends towards top mid just to make sure nobody was going to turn that corner. And look at how cautious and cognizant they are. I, w I, I do wonder if that's just an old mentality because I think you would it would be like 50-50 to just run out mid doors now. I guess it just depends if someone's going to drop down suicide and watch if you do that on an eco or not. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's all your eggs in one basket kind of situation. Nobody likes that. Got to have at least two baskets. Sphinx. He's the rear guard looking for that flank. And What if you only have one egg? Oh, that's a crappy situation to be in, isn't it? Hades, rain's gone. Second smoke down, Kerrigan trying to be standing tall above all of it. Get a headshot. Significant damage on a snappy, but not enough to get the kill, and Kerrigan falls as a result. Twist is removed very quickly from Dia. And just like that, I think we've got a tie game. Hayes is, Hayes is starting to, you know, nothing crazy. I'm not gonna not gonna go nuts with it, but he's he's he had a couple kills these past few rounds. He's, had, he's got three kills since we kind of brought up his, his really slow start. Five and 12 now. And, I mean, it's kind of the... Uh, this is kind of the factor that helps kind of grind you out of, of those kind of pitfalls of when you have a slow start is in a game like this like yeah you, you, had, you only have five kills you probably feel like you're not doing a whole lot but you're gonna look up at the scoreboard and see it's 10 to 10 and if you can just imagine yourself saying like look my score might as well be 0-0 all that matters is what I do from here on out that's the way you kind of got to look at it because you're starting at that blank slate at 10 10. It's a good way to look at it. Definitely is a blank slate, more so because we are going to be back into a potential reset round for FaZe if they don't come away with this, but they've still got a bit of an economy. They've got to dwindle out of Ence's hands. But running a bomb plant is a small victory in that sense on top of the round win in itself, but... Yeah, this I think this is... I, I like that we're having these two teams on day one in a 1-0 in a map yeah. for a best of one. Because I think both these teams have a great chance of advancing. I think they both will. Yeah. And we're seeing a close game, but it's not, you know, it's not super high pressure. It's 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 great for both of them to be able to use this as a, a warm up in some ways. I know that obviously they both want to win. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's it's not a do or die situation yep. for them. That was a cool little boost. Get Brokey up on the Xbox, see what he could find, and it was nothing. Deep nade, nice work. 60 HP on Snappy, 82 on Dodo. Couple players outside long for the Ents attack, and other than that, the bomb and two other teammates huddled up in lower and upper dark. Gonna start grouping up together, find a way to force back any kind of catwalk defense that's there. That smoke will slow them down, but you wanna force back any presence here on catwalk before you make your move. Kerrigan's going to push on the back of Rain's coverage, an additional smoke that's down. 
And Rain does not have any further utility to flash his teammate in. Olaf, in fact, has the only utility left on the CT side, on the defensive side of the map. So Kerrigan backs away from it. Oh, he's flashed. But he's far enough back, I don't think he'll get peeked. In fact, they're not even going to go on the back of it. So safe enough for now, but he falls off the angle. Now likes to drop down. That puts more pressure on Rain himself on the site. And Kerrigan rotates away from Cat the exact second they decide to go there. So he's not going to see anyone in mid. Puts more emphasis on a retake, and that's why Rain's trying to stay efficient, stay alive. It allows Brokey to come back around. No one to anchor long, though. So he can't confidently look toward Time. the site without anyone staring in his direction. He has made it down toward the pit, though, and you're right. Time is a factor. They just got it behind the box. Brokey's still not convinced that there isn't a lurk toward long because it's such a common position, and he's going to rely on Olaf and Twist to find that information for him as they work toward this. No way. Yeah, they have to. Wow. I know it's easy for me to say that. You're right, because we have the information, but they're so convinced there's someone along where Brokey could have shut that whole play down by continuing to look toward Cat. It's just a risk, right? If, if he goes, I, I thought actually, I thought Kerrigan was going to kind of come up that ramp and just ignore everything and go for the jump kill on the planter. I, I thought he was just going to be fully focused on trying to kill the planter with what, like five seconds left. That would have yep. closed out the round, but tough scenario to do it. And he knows there's likely going to be streaming off catwalk and be able to shut him down before he can do it. 11 to 10 for Entz, one round lead now. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but it, it, I suppose it's the devil you know versus the devil yeah. you don't, right? You've got to get out and save these weapons because you can't afford to let the economy slip away at this point in the game. Yeah, that, I mean, that saving and being able to bring guns into the next round, being able to still fight with those weapons is such a big deal at this stage in the game. So nice that they have the op and the two M4s. I... I'm curious what they're going to do. I, I guess maybe a, a half buy, half investment around this. Kerrigan's picked up a scout. Rain likely going for armor and Deagle and maybe a little bit of utility, but you don't want to fully invest everything you got. Timeout is called by FaZe, so plenty of uh, plenty of time for them to kind of talk it through. Yeah, see, the, the problem is, like, we know Long is clear in this scenario, right? Yeah, like, it, it is we easy know. for us to say, I guess, <laughs> when I think about it from that perspective, yeah. yes. Because you're right, it, it's a common position. You normally have a late lurk. It's why we I touched on it earlier with Kerrigan there, Rain. Yep. You know, he swings back, and then he doesn't have to worry about that position. Here's the other problem with it, too, is, like, Ents, with the success they had getting into the bomb site, if there is a lurker at Long, he can play that as slow as he wants. Like, you know, he can really kind of just, just outpatience you. So it's a really odd position to be in if you're Brokey. Oh, wow. Sliding up forward of that Molotov could have been a problem, but there's no one else left in middle. Try to go for the boost. I, I gasped for a second because Brocky went back across late without that bait that they were trying to use. And I think he spotted them, but... Nothing came of it. Twi oh, I love this position from Twist. Goes early, though. Goes very early. Flash in. He needs to be aware of it. He needs to be aware of his ammunition because he's fired a lot of it. He's run out of life along the side of it. And with just the Deagle in the sight, Rain can do nothing to hold it off as Hades finds Brokey as well. Olaf and Kerrigan left against Dodo. Somehow they still come out on the better side of the exchange. But Dodo's got the sight and the bomb to work with. Doesn't have the cross yet. Doesn't have a lot of position. Throwing the Molotov. They'll hear that. But missing a shot forces him back. And that gets Dodo the cross. He sits with 25 HP as a flash. Ash bounces out, he finds Olaf baited off that, and now Kerrigan with the AWP. Oh, it shows the barrel went through the door to betray, and it's ends to find two in a row. What a brilliant clutch from Dodo. I thought he was going to get screwed so many times pulling nades out throughout that sequence. That's actually a really cool B-pop. Really fast from start to finish of when that utility's coming in. And, and I just finished saying, and I'm going to call it out, Twist was in such a good position, and he shot at the first player that his back turned. I think Trigger Discipline could have gone further there. I think he was good for two. Yeah, perhaps. That's It's a tough situation to be in when you know it's a full kind of exec coming right at you. You're the only player as well. Ooh, it was close, but it doesn't pan out for FaZe. Now Kerrigan's got the opening kill. Snappy trying to beat the smoke and beat the utility. He's punished. Four on five. And ends his response to seeing all that presence at long is quickly get out mid. Hades takes the gamble, knowing three started today. He wants to peek up and grab this rotator. I think he's going to get it. Oh, oh an no. opportunity. An awkward jump from Rain, and Hades could not and, handle and it. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, early in, in the game, he didn't need to do much and wasn't given those opportunities. Yes, there was times when he was hung out to dry. But yes, there have been key misses yeah. like that. That would have been a nice, nice one to have. Not exactly an easy shot. You're really cognizant of like how far you're swinging out, like looking at the B defender. But still... You're right, it was an opportunity that he couldn't seize. So, another B-pop with just three players, one lurker in mid. It's going to be Hades to cut off rotations, but Twist can also off. It's a good effect in the back of the B site. Two-man advantage. 
Crane trying to fire through the smoke at mid. Will now nade it instead. A little late. Yeah, didn't catch anyone, in fact. As Brocky now sits on the ramp. Self-smoke, hoping that it would extinguish any flames at his feet and he could stay alive longer, but he overstepped the mark, and Hades does not miss that time. Bomb to go for the plant. Hades to swing around. He'll play from the oak bags. And elevated above the smoke, he needs to be aware that Kerrigan is close as he looks away. Hades gets one shot, but that's Kerrigan's Q for two. And just like that, the lead cut in half. We go 12-11. Yeah, if Kerrigan wasn't so close, maybe Hades can pull off some magic. Unfortunately, it's not to be. I honest to God, I thought Entz was going to get their whole team out mid. I thought they were going to be very committed to that, to that mid play after this kill goes down, after they feel the presence. And man, they were real scared of that op at that B bomb site. 12-11. Good recovery from FaZe. Good round from Kerrigan. I think a triple kill in it. So one round the difference once again. And guns on both sides. But a potential to be broken on both sides as well. So this is a key round. Yeah, I think Ed says like one round buffer. But certainly FaZe would be put in a weird, weird economy if they're to drop this one. Here we go. Round 24 coming in. Hades with the AWP again. Twist still has his. So does Brokey. So there's that double up setup on the CT side we kind of touched on earlier. Had it in the previous round as well. Kerrigan now takes his top position on the scoreboard at 18. Again, I mentioned he tied twists in this morning's matchup as the top fragger, and he was slow to start here. Well, he's turned around just as Rain did for quite a few rounds in succession. It's cool seeing Kerrigan have such a good game after. I mean, he's been super vocal about how excited he is to be at this major. Not just that, but the entire stressful qualification process for FaZe. Yeah. They didn't make it easy on themselves. No, nearly didn't make it at all. Maybe that's twist hair. Maybe it just went gray. <laughs> it's actually just natural yeah, now just, for once. Like, I just became old from that qualifier. And spare spot. Uh, excuse me, spare a thought for Space, who has 25 kills. It's now Snappy that's actually at the bottom, because Hades found a few in the last round. Only seven for him, but two players still in single digits, and we're on round 24. That's not exactly what you want at a major. All you want is a win. The question is, do they clear out Kerrigan? Op going to be there to draw attention away in Brokey's hands. Surely we'll see... Broke, you get a little bit blind. You can see on the radar, Snappy setting up a flashbang. There's another one. The Molotov comes in. Kerrigan's forced out of the corner, but the smoke is going to prevent anyone from really challenging him. And actually, Dia just kind of, I don't know, gives that one up. Maybe they didn't spot Kerrigan coming out of the corner. Regardless, that's a freebie passed over. Four on five. Snappy through smoke. Kerrigan in the pit. We'll spot him up as he tries to get in behind the dumpster. And... Get buried inside of it by Kerrigan's quick, clean shots from the M4A1S. I, I honestly, I thought they would have heard Kerrigan get ticked or leave, and uh, apparently they didn't at all. He's on a tear. Three kills. He's got a chance for the ace. He's got wow. four. One more. Go get it. Go get it, Kerrigan. Wants the AK. Now he's going to go. Oh, no. He's gone. He's it's too late. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he actually was going to play it smart. He was going to back away. And I surely, feel like, like maybe his teammates it was definitely, were like, go. It was definitely Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> it was 100% okay, right. Olaf was like, bro, go get that ace. <laughs> I love that you're calling that out. But 12-12, FaZe have managed to turn the tides. After two close rounds getting away from them. Oh, well, I should say the first of the two were close. The second one was pretty clean from Entz. But now we find ourselves tied up yet again. And, and the money is going to be a factor. No bomb plant on the back of that. They were sitting around three grand, I would say, as sort of the mean for the team uh, with residual cash. And th yeah, they're going to force into it. But this is last buy if they don't win this round. Shouldn't say for the whole game, but certainly of, yeah. the, of the current situation. This is that cushion. Ooh, long play. This hasn't been successful for Entz. Kind of cool that they're oh, going to go no. back to it, but oh, it goes the other direction. They needed Rain to be traded. Just everybody blind. Good flashes, good support from Kerrigan. Talk about two players that had a slow start turning it on when they need to. That one-two punch at long of Rain and Kerrigan and the amount of action they've seen. If they stayed cold, this game was over a long time ago. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I, I can't recall Entz having a whole lot of, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of a round in which they got out long with, like, an opening kill with success and it feels like every time they go there they lose at least one interesting to see him continuously go back to it Hades gonna I mean desperately try and make something happen at the B bomb site but with the AWP as a solo player you are never gonna hard clear to your left 
Yeah, and this is exactly the spot I touched on. Twist playing is such a strong one, and even for that, you know, he doesn't even need to let them walk in. He can see the trajectory of the smokes, knows he's in that choke point, knows he's pushed up fairly far in it as well, and he's able to swing out and get the kill on what was a solo player at the time. Now, interestingly enough, Diaz not gone with his teammate over to Ward B, where they expected a little more activity, and he might get a plant off of this. He was hoping for, like, a kill from Hades. Maybe you pull the defense away, which he kind of did, to be honest. But yeah, if you get, if, like, even a 1v3? Three, 3 would be. Yeah, so yeah. possibly a 1-2. Well, he's got a 1-3 now, but... He's got a 1-4, 1v4. He had. He okay. said he has it now, okay? Just <laughs> All right. Calm down, Jason. <laughs> Molotov is out. What kind of magic can Diha bring to the table? That would be something cool. But Kerrigan, he's feeling real confident at the moment. When Kerrigan gets in this mood where you can see him just swinging and taking fights, it doesn't happen too often, but you could tell. Guy's having a good time. I love seeing him. I wish we were there now because I love seeing him after the games he plays like this because he yeah. just walks around like, yeah, I know. He's got like a different. He's got like a different walk to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I just felt like playing today. It's like, all right, dude. Kerrigan's great, man. 13-12, one round lead for FaZe, and there's that kind of nightmare scenario that you you kind of touched on. Money for Ents, not pretty. You're in a weird place where you could probably force a rifle by, but don't really want to quite yet. Not full desperate mode. So one AK, uh, three Tech Nines, and just some utility on the offer. See what they can find from the tunnels with an aggressive B play. It's entirely possible they've got... Okay, then they've got a second player in the window. I was going to say they got a, did only have one in the site. Pistols running in and overwhelming that situation. Quick bomb plant. Whew. Give the round a chance, but they've fallen off of it. And like I say, the second player has rotated over. Olaf and Twist together. And Twist again using the AWP at the back of the site. Flash, cross, Twist, easy shot on Snappy. They'll retrieve the bomb and smoke down now. They'll fall back and think of something else. I feel like FaZe, has, their defense has been so good since they brought out this double op setup. But funnily enough, it's not even because of the ops. <laughs> it's just it's just Kerrigan and Rain been dominating at long. Yeah. But the Twiz has had this double op setup going and rolling for quite a number of rounds. He did have the one round. Yeah, the first time we kind of saw it. We yeah. killed the shot player from the back of the site. But yeah. Other than that, they haven't really even challenged it. No, not, not so much. Even this time, just showing one player like, ah, no, he's, we don't want that. We don't want the alt. Four on five again. No, uh, one smoke, excuse me, on Diha. I guess it's just kind of walk out, try and get some safety of controlling mid, pop that mid to B smoke, and let's see what happens. Smoke in. Oh, gap in it. Okay. It's a gap that's low enough that they're far enough to the wall. They aren't quite spotted. Still some damage was inflicted as Twist inflicts a double kill from the site this time. Finally, he does get challenged, and he's able to confirm at least three kills in the round so far to his name. Finally, Kerrigan gets another on the board. It's Dodo that goes down, and Sphinx, the last player alive, will get a bomb plant in. Oh, he's got to reload that AK quickly as well because they are on the pursuit, and Olaf has the kill as FaZe will find round 14 to take now at four rounds sprint and a two round lead i had to think about how i was going to say that <laughs> yeah, no. it's like two to the end two to two in the lead oh, four okay four plus four eight nine negative four okay we're good we got this it's like please don't stay four round lead please just stay <laughs> oh time out for men's their final one as they are stumped at the moment i i just feel like it's been so long since they've had a man advantage i feel like i've said so many times four on five in the favor of phase and ends have not been able to find any success at opening kills anywhere on the map B bomb site you're facing off against Twist with an AWP. Long against Kerrigan and Rain has not worked for some time. Haven't really challenged mid with any kind of pace or, or catwalk as well. That might be something they could turn to, but that surely has got to be the conversation. Who's going to find us an opening kill and give us a little bit of breathing room in these rounds? Faze is knocking on the door of a 15 round safety net. Twenty-four kills on Kerrigan leading the way for FaZe. Twenty-six on Spinks leading the way for Ents and the entire server. Kerrigan again going aggressive. Oh, he spotted. Oh my lord. He's in a really precarious position right now, but he's made it by and toward that small murdered corridor now. He's ooh, got flash. That's oh. oh my god, even better. Not only does he get out of dodge with the first kill, he finds the follow-up. Now the round cracks wide open, and they know it. FaZe can sense blood in the water, and they'll go hunting. Twist will get Sphinx down as well, and it's on Dodo and Snappy. What the? 
That's foolish. Kerrigan, Dude, what is Kerrigan doing? It's like it's like the timeout came in for Ents, and Kerrigan was like, yo, Russ, oh, switch seats with me. Just playing my PC. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and rushed me for me. I've got the spawn. Bro, you have my mouse. <laughs> 15 to 12. This is incredible. Good flashbang from Rain as well. And it's, I think, yeah, that, that's so, that's so nice. Oh, that's a pretty sick shot, too, to be fair. Yeah. But, yeah, Kerrigan, this is just outrageous. What a performance. <laughs> 27 kills now, and it's you, map point for FaZe. You could see the confidence. We just touched on it. You know Kerrigan's feeling and having a good game. He's going to go right back for it. He's going for another push. He does not care at this point. What have you got, Kerrigan? Low or B? Oh, he's been spotted. Gonna start backing away, but cautiously sticking around for the fight. Brokey's in support. Add one for Kerrigan. Headshot, and he's just an absolute nightmare for Ents to deal with. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't win it now. Brokey, no, don't win it. He needs a 30 bomb, man. That's 28 kills either way is a huge performance, considering, again, he was the slowest of the starters. He was the last one to get rolling on the team, and what a consistent performance on the CT side, especially from Kerrigan, but Rain yeah. as well deserves a little bit of credit. And what a turnaround in the, in the game itself, because Ents looked good at the start. They looked really convincing, yeah. and it was it was a struggle the first few rounds. It was it was when Rain came out and had that, what, quad kill, including like a 1v3 clutch to, to just win the round that well, turned the entire fortunes. It, it absolutely did, and... and it would have been one thing if he'd won that clutch and then they lost the next one and it went right back to normal. But that clutch really opened the door for them. It yeah. was a huge I think the next round was a Kerrigan point. triple kill and then it was like off to the races.